If you're chasing big power from your FA20 in your Subaru BRZ or Toyota 86 and you're breaking timing chains, here's a must watch video and I'll hand it over to Dennis. Okay, I've dismantled the FA20 tensioner, chain tensioner, one of them here. Um, just trying to see whether there's a way of eliminating this tensioner piston from contracting inside itself here and causing too much chain slack, which may be destroying chains. So there is a way of doing it. Um, I would suggest, uh, in some circumstances, this obviously doesn't need to be done in all cases, but if you're pushing big power and um, you've had chains fail, timing chains fail, this may help. I'm not certain on this, but I have done it in the past on a couple of engines and I think this would certainly help. Um, so the piston <clears throat> is pushed out by spring pressure, but also obviously oil. So oil enters here, pushes against the piston and pushes that out on a little ratchet mechanism. The ratchet allows the piston to come out, but does not allow it to go back in. So you would think, oh, okay, well, that should be sufficient. Uh, but in some cases, it may be jumping and causing the piston to move back. Um, it has got a one-way valve system inside here. So once you get all pressure, so you can see the little ball bearing in there. Um, it's a one-way valve. Um, oil enters through the back here, goes in. This here is like a seal on the outside of it. Uh, goes in the bottom of this. Right, the very bottom. So oil only comes in through these three holes. Um, once the oil gets in here, in this chamber, it generally can't push itself back out because of the ball bearing in here. It's a one-way valve. But there is cases, I think, what might be happening is the valve gets stuck in here, whatever reason, and the piston retracts inside the adjuster, the, the timing chain tensioner here. So I suggest this. You can, once you've measured the distance, that the once you've assembled it with a new chain and whatsoever, um, you the, the piston may have come out this far, for instance, right? So you'll need to measure how far behind the piston. I've drawn a little thing here. How, once the piston travels out, you've got the right tension on the chain, the right adjustment on the chain, all you really need to do, I've actually shown here that you still leave the uh, one-way valve in there, uh, but manufacture a tube. It has to be a tube so oil can travel through it, and preferably a tube no different to, to this. Matter of fact, you could probably almost slice the back of this off, have two tensioners, slice the back of that off, insert that in there, and then insert this on top of it. Uh, that will certainly work, especially at the bottom here. You want it to to keep the very bottom of that uh, sleeve that I'm talking about inserting in here the same as the back of this piston uh, because of the way it pushes onto the one-way valve, as you can see. So that probably is pretty important to try to keep that end the same. The inside diameter only has to cater for the spring. So it has to be um, no, there has to be a hole or tube. It has to be no smaller than the spring. Obviously, the spring needs to contract inside it. <clears throat> so probably the inside diameter of it can't be any smaller than the diameter of the spring, outside of the spring. Uh, preferably a little bit looser, obviously. If you are, you are, if you are making one, um, and the length, will be determined by how your chain sits and the correct chain tension. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think just a tube uh, with this diameter, exactly the same outside diameter as the piston. Uh, inside diameter, no smaller than the diameter of the spring, preferably a little, a little bit bigger inside. Um, and the length is determined by your measurements. Um, so what will happen is the piston will go in there um, with the correct tension on the chain, everything comes out, 
but this piston then can't travel back inside itself, inside here, to contract inside. So you'll limit how far that goes back in there by by whatever you insert in there. Um, I mean, I could do something here. It's not really right, but I will put this in, for instance, in there. There's a little socket. I'm going to put that in there. <laughs> this just gives you an example. Uh, and then your piston goes in on top of it. Now, no matter what happens here, right, that piston cannot go any further back. That's it. It can't be pushed back. No matter how much load goes on it, it can't retract in there any further. But oil will still travel through the middle of it to push this one out as the chain wears. Um, so, but you can't have that sleeve in there too long where it puts too much load on the timing chain. So all your initial measurements, once you've assembled everything, you can see how far this piston comes out and then measure up a tube for inside here to take up that, to stop that from pushing back. And I think that should help, uh, certainly in causing chain chains to fail. But, you know, it, it could be other things causing it as well, but this is just one way of maybe limiting the um, the free play um, or the, the whip off the chain if this does contract, which will cause all sorts of dramas. So there you go. Maybe try that. Um, I have done it in the past on some engines. Um, but yeah, just see how you go. Hopefully it'll help. Thank you. We've got plenty of sick Toyota 86 content coming out. So hit subscribe and actually watch this next video on the biggest problem that we've found with FA and FB Subaru engines.